and a woman, 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 in every way. Welcome to every way, yeah, woman. Yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah. Are you in every way, woman? Live from Los Angeles, here's Every Way Woman. Welcome to Every Way Woman. So let's start with a little open dialogue. Should women who are the boss at work allow their men to be the boss at home? Huh. Well, sounds like you've been in my house. <laughs> okay. I, and I only say that because when, when I first got married, I struggled with this because I was a manager, a boss, and I had a lot of people. And then I came home and I started bossing my husband around. And I was just really, Ur. and one day he told me, he said, you need to have a seat. He said, what you do over at the city of blah, blah, blah is there. But when you walk in this house, I'm the head of this house. Now, I know that's okay for a lot of people, but he got my attention. Turn it off. You don't run anything up in here. We run it okay, together. So for uh -huh. you, you just step back and you let your man be the man of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, uh, yes. you like that? Yes. He is the man of the house. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I like a more traditional role, but if, <laughs> if I were at work every day and I was the boss and I was ha constantly having to stress out on, stress mm -hmm. levels are high when you're making decisions. Right. So if I came home and my man was like, hi honey, here's your dinner, I got laundry done, all the clothes are put away and we're gonna go upstairs and make magic in 30, I'd be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if I had the time and the energy, which we don't, we don't have the time and the energy to do all of those things. And if he has the time and the energy, if he's the one that's at home and needs to be in charge, then heck yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you it's know, a, iron. Right. And then do. What it's part, a partnership. Well, you know what I find really interesting, <laughs> though, is I think a lot of women um, let their men think they're the man of the house, kind of the, <laughs> the woman is the neck that turns the head. That is correct. If you will. That is correct. Mm -hmm. We are the neck that turns the head. Uh, a it's neck a has no art. purpose without a head, and a head has no purpose without a neck. So you work in tandem. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens is, is women sometimes, and I know we're going to get emails and texts, so I'm sorry right now. <laughs> we want chivalry, but then we want to wear the pants. Pick a mood. Yeah. Balance it, right? Ba balance it. You can't be talking, oh, baby, do this for me, do this for me, and then I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> I it doesn't work that way. And women, I stop want fooling it to. ourselves. <laughs> let's stop fooling ourselves. We're partnership. Mm -hmm. well, how do you see it? How do you see your yeah. household? Because <laughs> I've really uh, well, tripped you we, up with we, that. We know that you you have your eyes on having a career. Yes. I, I have. So, well, OK, again, I want the best of both worlds. Yes, I you am do. that classic. Oh. I want it all. I do want the career. I do want to be the boss <laughs> at work. And it is nice to be able to, I would assume, come home and let somebody else make mm -hmm. some of those decisions. But, what, but I can't imagine I would be able to turn it off and, and then just let somebody else step well, in. Let me add to that a little bit. Yes. Now, you're out there dating right now, and you're yes. looking for men who have jobs, who are successful. Who are stable. They're in progressive sure. careers where sure. they are. So what do you? how do you see it if you're the boss and you're doing this and this and this, and he's the boss and he's doing this and this, and then he also wants to come home and take charge of the house? I think you can let him take charge of the house <laughs> Monday through Friday, right? And then girlfriend takes charge on Saturday and Sunday and me, let him okay. have a little break and you can step in. I mean, can't you just share that world? Was, I think mm -hmm. I left the wrong picture with you because I'm not saying that you just stop at the door and you become home and you're, you come home and you're docile. That's not what I'm saying. So I'm an executive. You don't surrender. Well, here's that, no, I, I, I'm, do, I'm a manager at work and I'm executive. I make very high powered decisions, but in my home, I'm, I, he and I work together. I just don't come home and say, this is what we're going to do. I will say that where I work. I don't have a time sometime to, this is what we're going to do. But I don't bring that same spirit and same energy in my home. It's counterproductive. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that's helped the success of your marriage? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I was speaking with a woman. She's about 45 years old, and she had just... Uh, got out of relationship, starting mm -hmm. to date again. And what she had said is, you know, I have, why can't I find a man who wants to take care of me? Um, and, but I, she wants to be this strong, independent person. And then she said, is, and she juxtaposed that with, I know women who are very successful. They date men that are very successful. But I'm not, but her, she like serves her man. She goes to the buffet line or whatever, the event, and puts his plate together mm -hmm. and makes sure he has his drink and has all that. And she's well, like, what's wrong with that? Well, but see, her point of view was is, I, I don't, I'm a strong, independent person, and I don't need to do that. And, but yet here she is. She's single, and, and she can't find a that, man. And Jasmine, to you, 
That is the key. I can give you the secret about keep staying I married. I am listening. Stacey. Men want, my husband tells me and all his friends, men want three things. They want to know that they are valued in their home, mm -hmm. that they want peace. They want peace at all costs. And that they want to know that you have their backs as their wife. If yeah. you do that, you'll have their purse, you'll have their wallet. Right, right, There's yeah. nothing that they won't do for you and I, with those three secrets. I think you're right, Cece, because that's what she was missing. I think right. she was missing that, why do I have to serve him if I'm successful? He should serve me. That's right. Well, but, aren't you supposed to serve each other like I do to you as you do to as, me? Well, it's it's well, what it's works in your me. home. It's what <laughs> works in your home. My husband rubs my feet. I rub his head. My husband likes hot dogs. He doesn't want to wipe the necessary slaves over a stove. He wants me to talk to him. My friend's mm -hmm. husband, she has to have her food on the table. It's what works in your home. But as long as a man, and, and you give him some. <laughs> so, right? You give him some, he has peace. And he's he got he's food. Down. You will have a happy man. I'm telling you. Listen to me, ladies. <laughs> Any words of the wise from Madison? <laughs> I have to ditto. Ditto. Shave. <laughs> ladies, I think I have a lot to learn from the two of you because I don't know what my household's going to look like in the future, but I'm hoping it's a peaceful, happy. And give him some. And give him some. <laughs> See you next. <laughs> Are you in every way woman? Are you in every way woman? Welcome to Every Way Woman. So I'd like to start with a little game I call Shame or Fame. Ready, ladies? Ready. Let me break it down to you. Here's the story. Couple, together three years, get married, she decides she wants to have a baby. There's trouble with fertility. They now have to invest in further treatments. She's fertile, he is not, just to be clear. Now, in this, she finds out that he's $150,000 in debt. Surprise, she did not know. Immediately files for divorce. Shame or fame? Fame. Shame. Fame. Shame. <laughs> Look at me, ladies in the audience. Shame. Shame. Shame on her for not doing her research. They were together three years before they got married. Shame on her. Shame on her for leaving her man when he needed her. Okay, times were difficult, but she left him. What? Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> okay, oh, wait, wait. No, fame, 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 fame. Okay, yeah, so they gave her for three years. However, maybe that was not information that he disclosed to her. Now, if you give out information, you're like, oh, this is what you do, then you might think, yeah, the other person does that too. What yeah. is she then well, going to do? Go well, he didn't lie about it. Get, yeah, he didn't he lie about it. it. He was just a little hush hush. She didn't ask right. the right yeah. questions. As women, we got to ask the right question. We ask all kind of questions. Yeah, oh, yeah we, a man, all right. So in a relationship, we don't ask questions. Yeah, except, for, except for this. But I knew someone who had, had met someone and married someone whose parents had made their car payments for the first year, year and a half, two years of their marriage and didn't even know about it. Okay. Okay. So how was that? How was okay. she not to know but, uh, that I, he had made, in, made the, who in, was her, his in her defense and as a single woman, I want to know ladies, how much do you have to disclose about your finances? Everything. I mean, do I have to air all my dirty visa absolutely. bills? You because absolutely I have, have to air debt. You have to air. Absolutely. And yeah. if, if, if my mate doesn't air it, Am my excuse? I still have to ask the questions. Babe, love you. You're fine as ever. But how much money are we going to be in debt? Because it's our debt. Yeah. Because he didn't tell me. And, and I didn't ask. He, I just leave him? But maybe he didn't <laughs> tell her. Maybe she might have asked him. We don't know if she asked those questions and he didn't tell okay, her. Okay, so are you concerned maybe they that were, one lie can lead to another lie? Absolutely. Yeah, let's, that's, that's, that's a little lie. That, that's no, not even a little no, lie. No, but that's a very solid point, Stacey, that if he's not being honest about his finances, what else is he hiding? But... We don't know that he just didn't say anything and she didn't ask. Well, okay, well, what, did he spend his money on? what did he spend his money on? Frivolous things. We're talking okay. watches, glasses, That's absolutely. No, it, it's absolutely relevant. No, it's not. Yes, it is, because he spent his money on crap. He didn't even like go in debt to buy a house. Madison, if he spent it on a stripper or if he spent it on buying her oh. a ring, it's <laughs> irrelevant. The problem is, is at a difficult time in their relationship, she bailed out. And but that's he, the okay, shame. So but her here's relationship my wasn't real. Here's my thing. Okay, that's so thing. It wasn't even real to begin with. In my opinion, it's a little bit of both, okay? Typical Gemini, me. <laughs> I'm saying a little shame, a little fame. So... Why is it shame and fame? Let me hear this. In my opinion, good for her for standing up for herself. However... Standing up for herself? Shame, shame in the fact that maybe there was a few other alternative steps in the meantime before divorce 
to you know maybe therapy or uh, let's really. create a budget he, he bought together. A, he bought some watches and um, went took himself to McDonald's. Maybe it was one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth. But and they're gonna therapy. They're, wait, no wait, way. Huh? I just don't no know. way. How did she stand up for herself by leaving her marriage the because way some information came because that she didn't like? Well, she didn't want to waste any more time. She was ready to have a baby, to start a family. He was not able to do that, not only financially, but physically. So she moved on that, to find a different man. You know, being in debt is not a reason not to have kids. I mean, life right. happens and you want to have a family committed to it, that's great. But the, really what it is, is the man was a liar. He lied to her. And, and, and not giving full disclosure about your debt and about the way that you spend your money and what you spend it on. Now, if he had said he was $150,000 in debt because he had bought a house, mm -hmm. I, yeah, shame on her. Okay. But it wasn't for a house. Well, it was wait, for here's, You know, here's the thing. In his defense, maybe he was afraid to say that to her. And then I they didn't be, have a real relationship. But I'm, they, a, I'm nervous. They were together for three years and dated. Okay, so what? how do you have that conversation, Stacey? Well, then what are you doing with the when, three years? How did years you, you, know, okay, how did you have the Hey, baby, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take you out to dinner. This is $200. This is $500. This is, and she's thinking everything's okay. My man is taking care of me. She's this is, I'm in a good place. I feel good about where we are. And then she finds out, oh my gosh, those two, three hundred dollar dinners that we could have done without to be a hundred and fifty now I can't have a baby yes, ladies a man or, or not even say, a person can only keep up a farce for so long right we're dismissing they were together <laughs> three years okay but I'm go not back saying to that question, he was Stacey. right it's he's but he, he was over budget fifty thousand a year did not pay attention I'm okay. not saying no she didn't she pay, pay attention. attention no no but let's let's discuss the conversation she should have had with him how do you broach that with your man? How do you look at someone you trust who's assuming financial responsibility yes. and say, yes. I question you, baby. No, no, like, no, 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 Here's the conversation. Babe, I'm going to marry me. Yes, okay, before we get married, we need to talk about some things. One, we need to talk about our debt. Two, we need to talk about your credit, your, our credit. Three, we mm -hmm. need to talk about some HIV tests. you got to talk about yes. all things. I agree. I, I absolutely <laughs> yes. agree. Yes. I do. You just can't say, well, you're so fine. That's I love you. <laughs> Let's go to the altar. <laughs> I That's what I want to <laughs> Really? Do, it's not okay? like that? I, I would like it a little more easy than to have the interview my husband. Okay, then you okay. will be as a waller. Yes, 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 you will be there too. You will be there too. <laughs> more with every way woman when we come back. Stay tuned. No, that works. <laughs> Let's just go get. Are you in every way woman? Are you in every way woman? The doctors are here from Finesse Plastic Surgery to talk to us about facelifts. Trust me, this is a conversation you don't want to miss. Beauty is skin deep and aging is inevitable. But nowadays with technology, we have an array of options to choose from. We have Dr. Gown and Dr. West from Finesse Plastic Surgery to tell us what some of those options are and how to make wise choices, especially when it comes to facelifts. So, um, gentlemen, when does a person become a good candidate for a facelift? There's no age that's too young. It's certainly when the patient comes in and says, you know what, I'm having, looking in the mirror, I'm seeing features that weren't there before. The jowls start to sag, they start to get a little bit of excess skin and tissue in the neck, especially nowadays when we're working with technology, we're looking down, doing FaceTime with our telephones, we're, we're leaning over, we're accentuating what gravity is doing to so us. So really what you're saying is technology is encouraging us to age. <laughs> for some, yes. For, for some, it, it creates the illusion of aging because gravity and pushing forward is going to bring features down. Wow, okay. So the idea is we want to reverse those effects. We want to give the patient a refreshed look. So when I talk to patients, I always tell them to imagine taking a mirror, looking at it, instead of looking down into your tablet, Look straight up like this. <laughs> this brings back gravity plus add a little extra, and that's the desired look for what changes we want to uh, encourage so during facelift surgery. Are you seeing with technology that we're getting facelifts for generations that are younger now than they were maybe 10, 15 years ago? I think people are certainly more aware of it. With all the social media, with Facebook posts and Instagram and all the, people are sending a lot of photos of themselves. Uh, and then, which means they're looking a lot, at a lot more photos of themselves. So in addition to seeing what they see in the mirror, you look at a photo and it's a really objective way of seeing the problems that you have in your face. So since our culture is going toward, down that pathway of taking a lot more photos, sharing a lot more photos, 
people become, I think, a lot more self-aware of their aging features. And so uh, they're, they're coming to us and say, well, I, don't, I hate the way I look on my Facebook post, or I hate the way this Instagram photos look. They're just, I think there's just a, a heightened awareness because we're photographing ourselves so much more. Okay, so I have a question. Am I too young to have a Facebook, or is now a good time? <laughs> it's, it's, it's never a question of too young. It's if you have features that are bothersome to you, we're going to give you the entire array of options of what's possible. So that doesn't mean automatically jumping to a facelift. We have an entire uh, uh, plethora of non-invasive techniques that we can use to try to avoid a more invasive surgery. Okay. And still turn back the, the time of the clock. So you would suggest that instead of jumping into plastic surgery or a facelift, something that someone could do is step in and start preventative measures way beforehand. I think that's a good way of thinking about it. I think that, you know, to Mark's point, we don't have an uh, a pa a algorithm or, or set of rules that says at 35 you need this and at 45 you need this and at 65 you need this. Our job is really to assess your face because people age at very different rates. Mm -hmm. We have people who develop a lot of skin laxity earlier in life and people who, who sort of hold on to some of their features a lot longer. So our priority is when a person comes in, number one is to get them to tell us what bothers them about their face. And then based on what, con what their concerns are, we give them options. Some of those options might be surgical, but a lot of them are gonna be non-surgical. And certainly starting off with non-surgical options is the easiest way somebody can sort of enter the plastic surgery world. Okay, well once someone makes a decision to have plastic surgery, how intense is the surgery itself and recovery time? It really depends on the surgery that's performed. So if we're talking about minimally invasive procedures, these are things that can be done outpatient, same day, no downtime. Oh, wow. Then we go into the more moderate types of procedures, the mini facelift, the eyelid surgery, which are, I'd say, an intermediate recovery, mm -hmm. and then a fuller facelift, brow, brow lift, forehead lift, is going to add a little bit longer time. And also, there's the mix of procedures. If you add multiple procedures at, at one sitting, then the recovery is going to be a little bit longer. But these are not procedures that you have downtime of months and months and take weeks and weeks to recuperate. They're still very short, protracted, protracted times. What would you consider a short time for a really invasive surgery? Well, we, we tend not to do anything really invasive. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of what's the most you can do in one sitting for facial rejuvenation, we're talking about a full facelift, a neck lift, upper and, eye, and lower eyelid surgery, a brow lift, and fillers of some sort using your own tissues, whether it be some of the tissue we'd normally throw away or fat that we harvest from liposuction and then put back into strategically placed areas in the face to give back volume because volume is another thing that we miss as we age yes. because the fat atrophies as well as skin thinning out and dropping down. Okay, would that be extremely painful to recover from? Is that like not, a, a one-week process, a one-month process? I think it's different for everybody. First of all, in terms of pain, no, our, our faceless patients don't tend to complain very much of pain. The first 24 hours aren't fun because you've been under anesthesia, so people often say, well, I didn't sleep very well that night. We have them sleep propped up with a bunch of pillows to keep their, their heads elevated to, to help with swelling, but pain isn't really a common concern. Uh, it's uncomfortable because your face is wrapped up and you, need, you often need some help, but it's not at all a painful surgery. In terms of the recovery time, you know, I've had patients where you operate on a, on a Monday and they go back to work that same week on a Friday, and then we have people for whom the recovery is more of a two to three week. The average person is more of a two to three week recovery. Two to three week recovery. And, and most of what we, what we tell them is it's really social downtime. Okay. It's not that they're sitting around in pain, in bed, writhing around the floor crying. <laughs> it's, right. it's that they're a little bit embarrassed to go out because they're a little bit black and blue, a little mm -hmm. bit swollen, and they'd rather stay indoors and take time to recover. Well, thank you, Dr. Gowan. Thank you, Dr. West, for joining us. They are with us from Finesse Plastic Surgery, and you can check them out on their website. Are you in every way woman? Are you in every way woman? Five ways that exercise is like sex. Got your attention, right? Jeanette's here to explain. Is it what I think it is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's really a technique because when I tell people I'm going to talk about exercise, they roll their eyes and they're like, <laughs> oh, God. But when I say exercise is like sex, then they're like, oh, tell me more, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> so what I mean is that your relationship with exercise, your relationship with, with your body is like sex and having a relationship with another person. So sometimes you have to move things around and change things up, right, to get it going. 
get a little spicy. <laughs> a little spicy, right. So for example, one thing is, you know, when your sex life needs a little jump start, yeah. maybe you're going to go do it somewhere new, right? So you okay. can do the same thing with exercise. Maybe if you usually exercise in the gym, you're going to go exercise in the park. You know, maybe you'll do it somewhere public. But I don't want to have sex in a park. <laughs> you don't have to have sex in the park. I know, I know what you mean. But you can, you know, work out in the park, yeah. and that's acceptable. Be a little bit more adventurous. Be a little more adventurous, I right. get it. And that's another thing that you can do to spice up your exercise life is to try something completely different. Right? So if you usually are a dancer or a walker, maybe you're going to try surfing. Try something outrageous. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Surfing's fun, huh? <laughs> Does that mean having sex on a surfboard? <laughs> I don't even want to think about the logistics of having sex on a surfboard. But, <laughs> but I think it would be interesting, and it would involve a lot of muscles, that's for sure. Do something different. In right, other words, yeah. right. <laughs> also, you know, it's very important who you exercise with, just like it's very important who you have sex with. And finding that exercise partner can really be a challenge. For example, you need somebody who has similar goals and desires as you if you're going to work out together. If you've got one person who's like, I want to run a marathon, and you've got another person like, I want to exercise 10 minutes and stop. I get it. You're right. You know? Where do you go find them, though? You have to, you know, the same place I'm you find single. them. I don't know. <laughs> you can find them, like, on Craigslist. You can find them at the YMCA, wherever. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, you also have to have the right equipment. You know, okay. so like just like in the you need the right tools for the job, so everybody is safe and having a good time. You also need the right tools for exercise. You need the right clothes. You need the right stuff. The right the equipment. Bike, the I get right it. equipment. I get it. Yeah, but I think the most important way that exercise is like sex is that if you are not having fun, you are not doing it right. <laughs> If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. It should be fun. You know what? I, I don't have to tell people, you know, you should have sex three times a week. They're like, let's go. <laughs> but when I tell people they should exercise, they're like, oh. But it should be fun. But if you say it that way, oh, yeah, let's exercise. Yeah, they're like, let's go right now. We're ready. I love it. What advice would you give um, anybody that's watching right now? You know, it's, I think it's important to think of exercise as something that you look for forward to as something you know you have sex because it feels good you feel good afterwards and it should be the same with exercise you should exercise because it feels good and you feel great after you're done well, well somebody like me um, what would you recommend for me not in the sex ways no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exercise I'm ways I'm <laughs> gonna stick to my scope of expertise you know Find something that you like. Find any kind of act. If you like to dance, pick something dancey. If you like to, you know, ride a bike. If you're adventurous and you like to be outside, maybe hiking. But think really hard about what feels fun to you and use that as your starting place. So then the five ways to round them up. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat them? So <laughs> you need to try a new place. You need to try a new activity. You need to... Do it with the right people. You need to have the right equipment, and you need to have fun. Wow, I love I love it how you put it together, though, in a sense, because you did get you got pretty much every guest out there his attention. <laughs> when everybody was so eager to find out what you were talking about. It. I love it. I love it because it got my attention. But obviously, putting it together, it does make you you know look at it in that perspective and want to. Oh, okay, it's easier. Those five steps to exercise, right? I think that that <laughs> is really my spirit of what I do and how I teach is that if you begin from a place of joy and having a good time, people are going to stick with it and they'll have a great time. That's like with my DVD. Right there. Right there. The Fat Chick Works Out. It's all about having a good time. I love it. Go check out her DVD and we will be right back with Every Way Woman. Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every 